Here we go, guys. My favorite team, the Vancouver Canucks, are in action. Today, we're going to do the preview. The Canucks in the wild. Happy Thursday morning to you guys. This is the final day of our playing previews. Tomorrow, we will be doing the full 8 preview video. And then at 3 p.m. on tomorrow, Friday, we will be doing a preview on the round robin matchups between the four teams in the west and the four teams in the east that might be a little bit of a longer video but we'll see okay guys canucks in the wild today let's look in the bracket today we have our final two previews to do the canucks in the wild right now and the predators and the coyotes at 3 p.m pacific time later on today okay guys so Toronto and Columbus was on Monday, as well as Pittsburgh and Montreal. On Tuesday, we had the Islanders and the Panthers, the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Wednesday, yesterday, we had the Flames and the Jets, and the Oilers and the Blackhawks. And now, our third Western Conference matchup between my favorite team, the Canucks, and the Minnesota Wild. The Wild are three spots below the Canucks even though they only have one less point. Goes to show you how one point can matter so much. As usual, we will go over the numbers first, and then we'll go over the storylines. The Canucks are 36, 27, and 6 with 78 points. Their top six forwards are JT Miller, Great trade, by the way, Jim Benning. People are still complaining about that JT Miller trade for the first round draft pick last year. It's paid off immensely for the Canucks. They have JT Miller, Bo Horvat, Brock Besser, Tanner Pearson, Elias Pettersson, and Tyler Toffoli. Another pretty good trade as well for Tyler Toffoli. Their top four defense Alex Edler, Tyler Myers, Quinn Hughes, probably a good. Calder candidate and Chris Tanev. In goal, they have Jacob Markstrom and Thatcher Demko. Their power play is fourth in the league at 24.2%. Their penalty killing is 16th at 80.5%. The Minnesota Wild on the other end are 35, 27, and 7, 77 points. Their top six forwards are Greenway, Stahl, Fiala, Parisi, Erickson Eck, and Cunning. Their top four defensemen are Ryan Suter, Jared Spurgeon. I think I typed that wrong. It's supposed to be Jonas Brodeen. And then Matt Dumba. Their goaltenders, I don't know who's going to start. I would think Alex Stalock is going to start, but Devin Dubnik and Alex Stalock. Dubnik, 890 percentage, 3.35 goals in average. Daylock is 2011-4, 2.67 and a 9.10 save percentage. Their power play 11th in the league with 21.3 percent. Their penalty killing 25th in the league with 77.2 percent. The season series went to the Wild, but they won one of those two games in a shootout, and the scoring was tied at nine apiece. Okay. Both teams rank in the top half of the league in offense. The Canucks are 8th in goals per game, and the Wild are 12th. The Canucks rank 18th in shots per game, and the Wild 25th. The Canucks have a little bit more offense with a very exciting and gifted young core that includes Elias Pettersson, Brock Besser, and Bo Horvat. Plus Quinn Hughes on the blue line, a rookie, good Calder candidate for this year. They also have JT Miller, Tyler Toffoli, and Tanner Pearson in the top six. The wild scoring load this year was carried by Kevin Fiala, which had a who had a very, very strong bounce back year in his first season in Minnesota. And of course the work of veterans like Eric Stahl, Zach Parisi, and Matt Zuccarello. But based on this, Canucks have pretty good offense and probably better offense in this series. In defense, the Canucks gives up a 
slightly fewer goals per game. They gave up 3.1 goals per game, ranked 20th. The Wilder 3.14, 24th. The Minnesota Wild ranks 11th in shots allowed per game, and the Canucks struggle to keep the opponent attempts down and rank 28th in shots allowed per game. The Wild have a very def- good, strong defensive group, very much experienced. Ryan Suter, Jared Spurgeon, Jonas Brodin, and Mac Dumba. They have allowed the lowest number of high danger chances on net this season. And that means their defense does a very good job of staying structured and very very well tuned in in their own end, especially around the net. Special teams, the Canucks have a very, very potent power play. They're very effective at drawing penalties. Elias Pedersen, wink wink, to earn those power plays, and they have second most power play opportunities in the league this season. The Wild rank 11th and 21.3%. The Canucks also have an edge in penalty killing. Goaltenders. As you know, the Canucks were struggling as they head in, in this pause. The, the Wild were heading in a different direction, a very positive direction, but the Canucks are a very negative direction. And one of those big stories that might give Canucks the edge here in this series is the return of Jacob Markstrom. Because this league shutdown allowed him to come back into the lineup for this special play in tournament and the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Canucks needed Jacob Marks from his stature Demko couldn't really hold on to the weight on his shoulders. The Canucks 9 save percentage for Jacob Markstrom and the workload he faces on a nightly basis he is very very good when he face faces a lot of shots but you can't rely on that every single game can we? And he has been able to bail the Canucks out in a lot of poor defensive strategies. On the other end, the Wild have struggled in goal. Devin Dubnik struggled a lot in net with an 890 save percentage. As the starter at the start of the year, he struggled mightily. But Alex Daylock emerged as the number one goaltender and he will likely start game one for Minnesota. A 910 save percentage after all. Big things here are the Canucks need to keep their offense going. They have some chance... They have a lot of games where they shoot a lot, but they don't end up capitalizing. Capitalizing, and they must be able to do this as the wild defense is quite good. The Canucks need to be able to get through that defense. I know how, how much the Canucks struggle once the wild in the regular season. We can all see that, and this is going to be a tough series for both teams. On paper, I would think that the Canucks look quite a bit better, but again, the Canucks need to play to their potential as we all know they can, and with Jacob Markstrom and Nitt, I don't see how the Canucks will lose this. I will go with Vancouver in four games. I know, as a Canucks fan, I really want the Canucks to win, but this is based on fact-based check. This is not so much of my inner fan channeling. So don't worry about that. I'm very, making a very fair assumption here. But anyways, that's going to wrap up our preview here today. Game 1 will be on Sunday, August the 2nd in Edmonton at 7.30pm Pacific Time, the late game. So stay tuned for that. At 3pm today, we'll be doing our final play-in preview. And tomorrow, we will be doing our one-hour special. Around one hour. I don't know how long that video is going to be of all eight series compiled into one large preview. And then 3 p.m. on tomorrow, we will be doing that round robin preview of all the top eight seeds in the league. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for later on today, where we preview the Preds and the Coyotes. Thank you guys for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. And as always, it is time for us to go... Have a great rest of your day and take care, everyone.